So you wanna have rounded corners in your videos just like Ali Abdal. Well, fortunately, I have a free download for you. Once you've installed the plugin, you can go to FCB's Patreon and locate round corners. I'll apply this onto any video, it doesn't matter what shape it is, and now you'll immediately start to see some changes happening. In each of the corners, you can start to see how they are rounded. If I go ahead and hide these controls, we can see them a bit better. I can drag up the roundness if I wanted to, but bringing back those controls, you can see that I can adjust the shape of this mask. So we can shrink it down to be just surrounding me. We could make that a little bit wider if we wanted to, and we can click and drag it to move it around the screen. Additionally, I've added the option to enable a drop shadow. We could increase the distance and bring up the blur, and that is looking super nice. So now that we've applied this onto our video, we should be good to go. If you think this will be a helpful tool to you, there is a free post on my Patreon down below. And if you want access to 100 plus more downloads for Final Cut Pro, you can sign up as a Patreon member for $4 a month. Now, if you're interested in how to build this plugin for yourself, well, the next part of the video is for you. To create this effect, you're gonna need to open up Apple Motion. From the project browser, go ahead and select the Final Cut effect. I recommend setting your preset and frame rate at whatever you typically like to work with in Final Cut Pro, and then I'm gonna leave my duration at 10 seconds. We can push open, and you should be greeted with a basic project file like this. Let's jump down and select our rectangle tool, and we'll just create a basic rectangle. It can be any shape, it does not matter. From there, we'll go to the inspector, go to our properties, find the position parameter, right click, and then select reset parameter so it's directly in the center. Also, we don't want this rectangle to be in the group that's with the effect source. There seems to be some issues that can happen with that, so let's click and drag the rectangle out of that original group, and we'll just call this the mask rectangle group. And then the original group, we can just call this the source. I wanna add one last layer. Let's go over to library, go to generators, and then locate the color solid. I'm gonna click and drag that up above so it's in its own group. And this is going to be the on-screen controls. Let's rename this group to be OSC and I'm going to disable the visibility on it. We could also go into our color solid and just call this the controller or whatever you wanna call it. Then from there, we're going to apply the controls that we need to adjust this rectangle. So we'll go on up to our filters, go down to tiling and then select collide a tile. You'll notice if I spread this out that this gives us access to all sorts of controls on the screen. We can adjust the width and the height using all these controls on the outside, plus we can adjust the position. Let's go on over to the inspector and locate the width and height. I'm gonna set this to be 3840 by 2160. If you're on a 1080p timeline, you'll want this to be 1920 by 1080. I'm also gonna make sure that my rotation is set to zero and we're going to apply a parameter so that we can't rotate it because that can cause some weird issues. Let's click on this down arrow. We'll select add parameter behavior and then select clamp. The clamp parameter allows us to set specific values that our parameter cannot go beyond. So in this instance right now, it can't go beyond zero degrees and it also can't go beyond 572. Let's change that to be zero. So now our collider tile effect can no longer rotate and this will be really handy specifically when you're grabbing the corners of the mask. With all that set up, it's time to link our rectangle to that collider tile effect. Selecting the rectangle, let's go to the shape and find the geometry settings. In here, we'll find the size. We can expand that and find the width and height. You're going to need to do these separately. First, let's go to the width. We'll click on the down arrow, add a parameter behavior and select link. I'm gonna call this link width for clarity's sake. Then from there, we can find the controls layer we created. I'll just drag that into the source object well. And now we can tell motion what we want to link from the source object. So let's jump into our compatible parameters. Let's go down to filters go to collider tile and find the width. So now we are linking the width from this collider tile effect to our rectangle. And you can see that as I click and drag, those adjustments are being made. Let's do that with the height as well. So I'm gonna select the link width and push command D to duplicate it. Let's just rename this to be link height. Then going over to the left side, we'll find compatible parameters. We'll go to filters, collider tile, and select height. But now the height of our collider tile effect is affecting the width of our rectangle. So we need to change that. Coming down here to target parameters, we can change it over to object. Then we'll go to size and select height. So now the height of our collider tile is affecting the object and our width is affecting it. Finally, we want the position to be linked. 
Jumping back over to our rectangle, let's go to our properties and locate the position parameter. We again need to do this individually. So expand out that position parameter and find X and Y. We'll click on the down arrow next to X, add parameter behavior and select link. Then from there, we can go ahead and click and drag in the object of our controller. We'll change it from compatible parameters over to filters, collider tile, center and X and you'll immediately notice that it's shot our object off to the right side. That is because if we take a look at our collider tile effect in the center parameters and we expand that you'll notice that X and Y are both set to a value of 0.5. The reason behind this is I have no idea but we have an easy way to offset that. So going back to our link parameter, let's actually rename this to be link position X. We'll find this X offset at the bottom. Let's go ahead and just type in a value of negative 0.5. And so now we have offset that object. And now wherever we take our collider tile in the X direction, we'll move our rectangle. Finally, let's do the exact same thing for the Y value. Command D to duplicate it. We'll rename this to be link position Y. We'll come on over here to compatible parameters. We'll go to filters, collider tile, center and Y. And we want that to drive the Y position of our rectangle. So we'll go to properties, transform, position and Y. Then we need to offset it once again with negative 0.5. So now we have this collider tile object that we can move around the screen. We can also shrink in the edges, but finally we want this rectangle to be masking out the original effect source. That's how we're gonna get that rounded corners effect. Finding the source object, we're gonna right click on it and then select add image mask. From there, we can go ahead and locate our rectangle and drag that into the image mask. Now it looks like nothing is happening, but our rectangle is actually cutting out that source object. So if I were to take this collider tile and drag it, you'll see how it's cutting it out. So now all we need to do is to round the corners of our object. So we'll select our rectangle, making sure we're in the geometry tab, we can drag up the roundness and just like that, you can see how we're rounding the corners. If I want access to this over in Final Cut Pro, I'll go ahead and just publish a few parameters. One being this roundness. We could click on this down arrow, push publish. We could also jump into our collider tile effect. Let's say we wanna publish the position. We could do just that the width and the height. So now we'll have access to all those controls, but there's one last important step to make sure you can see this collider tile effect over in Final Cut Pro, and that is to make sure that Publish OSC is checked. Once we've done that, we are good to go. We can push Command S to save or to publish, call it whatever you want it, corner rounder, throw it into whatever category you like, and then push publish. This will now be available over in Final Cut Pro, and you can use this effect as much as you want in your videos. If this video was helpful to you, consider pressing that like button. It does help tremendously. Also consider subscribing as I have new motion and Final Cut Pro tutorials every single week. And you might wanna check out this video where I show you how to create an Ollie Abdul picture and picture effect using Apple Motion. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.